Hey, what's up? It's Ryan. Real quick before we get into this session of THC podcast, I wanted to tell you about the 10 day hustle. Get an advantage over your competition, make more money in just 10 days, and it's 100% free. My gift to you shoot over to 10dayhustle.com or text the word hustle to 44222 and sign up now before we take it down. Again, that's 10dayhustle.com or text the word hustle to 44222. Let's hustle, baby. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Stuman, the founder of HardcoreCloser.com. Listen, this podcast is all about helping you, the sales community, close more deals. Listen, if you're selling cars, homes, financial services, consulting, coaching, whatever it is that you push onto the marketplace, this podcast is dedicated to helping you generate higher quality leads, increase your closing ratios, and show you how to charge premium fees for the items you sell so that you can get paid what you're worth. Listen, this is episode number 32, man. We like having a good go at this thing. I think I say that every week now. Maybe that's that shtick is getting old. It's like, hey, we're 32. We established. Speaking of 32, last week I turned 37. And uh, just a side note, it's it's been like an eye-opening experience, y'all. It really has because on the same day, one of our Break Free Academy, one of our early on Break Free Academy members passed away uh, Chris Roberts and, and shout out to Michael Fisher and TJ and really all the members of the MFBA, uh, LO group, those guys, the mortgage finance banking association of loan officers, man, those guys are really good people. Uh, I've known Mike and had the pleasure of knowing him and TJ for many years now. And, and they've been clients and, and really more friends than clients. And, and that group really does have a heart. You know, when the, the police issue happened in Dallas, they sent p- pizzas out to all the police departments. Uh, when Chris, who's really the first one of us to ever have an unfortunate thing and pass away, those guys really stepped up. And, and I think they raised $20,000 for his wife, who I believe is like a stay-at-home mom. They had another kid on the way. And, man, it, you know, waking up on my birthday and being 37 years old and finding out that one of your clients, and I worked with Chris when I, I did loans at, at TexasLending.com. He was actually somebody that worked in the the next office space over from me. So I've known him since 2008. And, uh, you know, when you're older, when you're young, like when Jackson Asher turned four and five, they're like, I can't wait to be 18. And here I am turning 37. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm at that age where my friends can die. Oh, fuck. And this is just an eye-opening experience. So, you know, I uh, I like to dedicate – this podcast, uh, Chris Roberts, you're a good dude and a, uh, a good friend, and we were glad to have you. And I'd also like to uh, give another big, huge shout out to Mike Fisher and TJ Barker and the MFBA LO group. You guys are uh, a fucking amazing group of people. Like if you are looking for a house, you need to find one of the guys that's in that group first before you do your mortgage with anybody Those guys are the best. So uh, enough of the sad stuff, man. But we just had to have a moment. Right. Like this is real here and that's what's on my mind. And and I just want to have a real moment with you. You know, that's one of the things that I do well. I'm not always a, a, a beautiful sight, but I'm always real. Uh, I've just put it out here. That's what we do these podcasts and everything else for. But uh, before we jump into the episode real quick, uh, we want to give a shout out to Meggie, Meggie 02162. Again, with the damn AIM users was that AOL email address. <laughs> anyway, uh, April 24 of 2016, lots of y'all hit me up in April. She gave me a five-star review. She says, good stuff. She says, Ryan's view and experiences in sales are refreshing and wonderful. Uh, this is on the top of the list of things to do while I'm on the road. So she's uh, a listener that hits it in traffic. Hey, man, you might as well have me yelling at you a little bit in traffic, right? It's like, hey, man, get your shit together. Get your shit together. Get to work and make some sales, right? You want that? on your way to traffic in the gym. I like to listen to like the motivational books and the podcasts and stuff like that in the gym. So uh, let's jump into the episode this week. We're going to talk about tips to generate leads from Facebook ad campaigns. That's a big subject right now. I've been on the Facebook ads bandwagon since 2012 or 13. I've been consistently running Facebook ads. And so I've had a lot of uh, experience running these and You know, I've taught a lot of people. I've taught uh, thousands of people how to run ads on Facebook and how to profit and generate leads and stuff like that. So I figure, uh, you know, it's not a I figure. What happened is the market demanded that I talk about this. And really, this is the modern way of selling, right? Like a a lot of people, they get caught up in sales being like fast talking, slick talking. But 
the modern way of selling is getting things like Facebook to be that referring mechanism to you. You see, Facebook can be one of the best referral partners you could ever align yourself with. They know a billion people. Imagine if you met a referral partner at like the uh, – what is it? The, the Kiwanis Club or whatever the hell they are. You went down there and you met a referral partner that had a billion people in their Rolodex that knew them firsthand and trusted them. Imagine the gold mine that you would uh, – imagine the gold mine that you would have your hands on if you were – like, dude, I am distracted as hell, you guys. Y'all are going to love this shit. See, this is this is some sales shit right here. Like, let's just have a moment for sales. The guy that sold me my Maserati just sent me a picture. Like, this is real time happening in the middle of this. Just sent me a picture of a McLaren 570S fully decked out. And he's like, hey, Ryan, look what showed up. Damn you, sales guys. Mm, mm, mm. Got to take him in. All right, focus, Ryan. You got money to make. You need a new car. <laughs> so... Uh, so, you know, uh, Facebook is, is the new modern way. And imagine if you met somebody that had, holy shit, this thing is really fucking nice. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We'll have to get to that in a minute. But, and, and I've been wanting one. Yeah. All right. Go back. Focus. Holding this back in y'all. All right. So the thing about Facebook is that's, it's the best referral partner you could possibly have. Maybe next to Google. Google's a hell of a referral partner too. Google wants you to grease their palms a little bit more than Facebook does just because of the way that it's set up. Facebook is like Google on steroids if you know what you're doing. However, Google response is direct response for people looking. Facebook, you got to be a little bit better than the average person because if people want information, they go to Google. They don't go to Facebook. So when you're running ads on Facebook, you have to you have to position your advertising and you have to think a little bit uh, differently than you would if you're doing uh, Google or really any kind of direct response uh, marketing. You want to think of Facebook more like your mailbox. You know, when you go to uh, your mailbox and you have junk mail in it, the 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 whole purpose of the junk mail in the mailbox is as you're sifting through the mail, you go, oh hey, I wonder what's in this, right? And the effective pieces of junk mail are the ones that find their way into your hands at that time. They, and you say, oh, hey, wonder wonder what this is. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to use this coupon or whatever the case it is, right? Well, that's how Facebook is. It's like people are scrolling through the news feed, the equivalent of their mailbox, and they're like, oh, hey, this is a pretty cool thing. I think I'll take them up on that. Now, I mean, think about this for a second. How many times have you been scrolling through Facebook and bought something? I do it every now and then. Uh, and I'm not talking just like digital products or coaching or any of that other crap. I'm talking about – like how, how many times have you ever been scrolling through Facebook and you happen to buy something that was being sold on Amazon or a CRM or some kind of little, you know, $5 widget or whatever the hell, right? I've bought all sorts of stuff from Facebook. Just seeing things in the news feed, I'll be like, oh, that's really cool. I bought something the other day called Live Leap. It was a little software and uh, they got to work some bugs out of it. They couldn't segment it like I wanted to, but it was a really cool little piece of software, especially for those of you that don't manage hundreds of pages like I do. Uh, but I, I bought that just because I saw an advertisement from Facebook. So we know that Facebook advertising works, but it has to be something that jumps out at you. Just like if you're going to the mailbox, you're not going to the mailbox looking for advertisements. You're going to the mailbox looking for mail, your bills, things that you, you know, if you're like me, checks in the mail, right? You're going there for those reasons. And then when people have junk mail there, occasionally it catches your eyes and causes you to take action. Facebook's the same way. It's a direct response marketing platform, and it's very hyper dynamic. And we'll talk about all that and everything else. But you have to understand it, it's different. People aren't actively going on Facebook searching for things like they do inside of Facebook. So here's what you got to do first you got to come up with a powerful name for your Facebook page. Uh, oftentimes, people try to brand it themselves. And there's, hey, you know what? To each is to own. But there's two paths you can take you can take to brand something after your name. Or you can take something that's what I call legacy branding, something that's you know uh, something that's going to last more long term, uh, something that you can put other people in as part of the team. For example, I don't really promote the Ryan Stuman page. I promote Hardcore Closer, and to me, uh, I want to build Hardcore Closer as a legacy brand out. I'm not building the Ryan Stuman page. I'm building the Clickso page, right? So I like to build my pages after companies because. People respect the brand, and then in the future, as you scale this thing, you can put other key people in place. And so, uh, like I teach my guys in Break Free Academy, just like a quick little, you know, trick here. I teach my Break Free Academy people that uh, don't like, especially the real estate and mortgage guys. I'm like, nobody's really a fan of like a, a coach 
or a consultant or a real estate agent or an insurance person. So we, we go and we name the page after what they want. What do they want? News in the local marketplace pertaining to them. Awesome. So we name the home, uh, we name the page like, you know, news in Newport or whatever the hell, right? Somebody just said the Newport News or whatever. And then we run ads from the Newport News page to our funnels. And, and see, that's the key because then we've got the Newport News page as the authority page, as the influence, just like a, a channel. Now, I'll share this with you. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. We, see, when you have a fan page or a personal page or a group or whatever it is on Facebook, those are like channels on a TV. When somebody's sitting on the couch, they're flipping through the channels on the TV. They're looking for something good. When you've got multiple uh, Facebook pages and things like that, each one of those is its own channel. And your idea is as they're flipping through the channels to get them to stop on your channel and watch your programming. And because they watch your programming, they have to sit through ads. And so a lot of people, they're just out there aimlessly doing Facebook, social media, however the hell they want to, not thinking much about it. When in reality, you've got to get intentional about this because there's media channels out there that are using Facebook very intentionally. And a lot of my clients are as well. So naming the Facebook really needs to be some sort of authority figure, especially if you're not an authority, if you're not a popular person or whatever yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't consider myself a popular person. And that's why I use Hardcore Closer. And it was something that I could grow legacy-wise too. Uh, second thing is, you know, about the name in your Facebook page, if somebody sees that right up front, it's like, you know, you're a salesman or that there's some sales process or a realtor or whatever. They immediately start thinking about money and your drop off rate is going to be significant. I like to sell them on what they want first so that I can close them on what they need at the end, which is usually whatever it is that I sell. Uh, number two, targeting tips. You know, I try to use $25 per every 50,000 person that I am targeting. It takes about 25 bucks to get in front of 50,000 people a day if you've done your targeting right. If you're selling local, you know, uh, like you have a, a local bakery or local car dealership or an insurance brokerage, mortgage brokerage, real estate brokerage where you're focusing on local, uh, you know, you want to really the, – the key to targeting is this. Like who the hell are you targeting? See, a lot of people say I want to sell a house to anybody. I want to sell a car to anybody. But see, the same people that buy Lincoln Navigators ain't the same people that buy McLarens, right? The same people that buy Ford Fusions ain't the same people that buy T Toyota Priuses. You have to get inside of your head. So here's what I did. I did this this morning with my, my homie Rodolfo over in, in uh, Denver. By the way, if you look for a good real estate agent that's got like the hookup on all the inside, like little niches and shit like that in Denver, hit Rodolfo Cannon up. He's a badass. Uh, shout out Rodolfo. But the thing that we were doing is we were talking about, okay, so who lives like – so, okay, you want to do business in this neighborhood. Who lives there? How old are they? How many kids do they have? How much money do they need to make a year? How long are they going to live there? Why do they live there? Is it about the school district? Is it about the area? Is it about the location? What is it that draws people there? How often are houses for sale there? What other neighborhoods are just like that? What would cause somebody to want to live there? What would cause somebody that lives there to want to leave there? Right? So like I'm thinking, we get to talk and he's like, well, people live there. They're 28 to 35. As soon as they have kids, it becomes school age. They move out to the suburbs. And we're explaining all this stuff like, perfect, now we're inside. So we're going to target people that are 22 to 35 because we know outside of that, they move to the suburbs. We're going to see that they make $120,000 or more. We go through all these different – like basically Facebook allows you to draw up your perfect avatar. What all characteristics do you want in a buyer? And you go back there and draw – see a lot of people, they just say, oh, well, I'm just going to you know, try to get in front of a million people. I would rather get in front of 50,000 people two or three times with the right message as opposed to get in front of a million people one time and nobody take me up on the message. Right. So you have to think about this, like who exactly is it that you're going after? And that's all you should pay for. The next thing is, here's how this works. The third part is the headline and the copy. But here's how this works. Like when someone's scrolling Facebook, the first thing they see is the picture. Then they read the headline under the picture and then they read the text under the headline. And then finally, they read the text above the picture. So when you think about it, you're, you're scrolling on your phone or you're scrolling on your uh, whatever it is in, in your desktop, your iPad, whatever, Android apparatus, whatever the hell you got. The first thing that catches your eyes is that picture, and the picture draws you in and makes you with the word association next to it. So the, the most it, that tells me the most important part of that whole advertisement is a picture. You see, in, in my world, in the coaching world, I know that people like Leonardo DiCaprio, Charlie Sheen, you know, the Wall Street crew, the Boiler Room crew, Wolf of Wall Street, like that, those are attractive to my audience. 
you know, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And so I use those images because when someone sees a picture of Alec Baldwin in front of an ABC chalkboard, they think, oh, this is sales. Then they read the headline. They go, oh, it is sales. Then I get them to read the call to action, which is in my text. You need to think of it in the same order. If you got a shitty picture, you can have the best product in the world, but nobody's going to look at it. If you have a shitty call to action, nobody's going to take you up on it. So the headline and ad copy is huge. Uh, and like I said, the image is the biggest part. And so – when you get inside, you got these targeting ideas. Now you got inside the head of who, you're like you know who it is that you want to go after, who's your ideal customer, and you've got this headline and ad copy all lined up. Your next move is going to be like, okay, well, what image are they going to associate with the reward that they get in the long term? See, the reason why I use Wolf of Wall Street is Jordan Belfort's rich as shit. So when somebody sees a picture of him, the association is he's made a bunch of money through sales. So if you're selling a, a real estate agent stuff, like the, the association would be the house in that neighborhood that everybody knows about, like the typical standard house, like you live here, right? That's what would draw out. And then the fifth thing that is important when it comes to uh, running ads on Facebook is you got to have a funnel, right? You could have the best, you can have the best targeting in the world. But man, I, another thing that I was talking to a client the other day, he ran uh, an ad to the wrong damn link spent like 600 bucks and then sent it to the wrong link so that when people clicked on it, they didn't even have a funnel to go through. It was a dead link. So you got to make sure that when, you know, the rule number one in Break Free Academy is test your own, your own funnel. As soon as you complete everything, you need to opt in and you need to be the first person on your email list. You need to make sure the text comes through. You need to make sure the email comes through. All your automation pieces fit together. You need to do all that stuff. Once you know that it works, that's when you take the headline, the copy, the image, and everything else, and go through the targeting. The funnel is the biggest part because, look, you could have the, the greatest targeting everything in the world, but if you don't have a way to capture people's information, it won't work. I highly recommend using something like lead pages or click funnels. Uh, if you are wanting to create a funnel, you can. I've got three choices. If you're an, uh, a mortgage person, you can use lead pops. If you are an internet marketer, I recommend click funnels. If you're a brand new to the game and you're in real estate, I recommend lead pages. You'll be able to find the links to all three of these, hardcorecloser.com and uh, right here next to this when you're listening to the replay at hardcorecloser.com. You can just search lead, play, lead pages, click funnels, lead pops, they'll all be there, my affiliate links, everything else. Uh, let me give you a quick recap. Again, it's important what you name your Facebook page. Think about it long term. Maybe it doesn't need to be named after you. Maybe it needs to be named after a company or a desired outcome. Targeting tips. Get inside the head of the person you want to do business with. Uh, headline and ad copy are huge. The first thing they're going to see is the picture, but then they're going to see the headline underneath it, and then they're going to see the text under the headline, and then finally they're going to read your text up top, which needs to be a call to action. Uh, again, the image being the most important part. And then five, make sure your damn funnel works. And a funnel's like this. you know, It's just a, a, a technology that can capture a name, email address, and phone number. Let's say you don't want to use lead pages or click funnels or lead pops. I mean, go use Wix or go use like Squarespace. Just however you can collect people's information, that's a funnel that you want to run and add to it. I recommend you go to bfadigital.com and go ahead and, and buy Break Free Academy Digital. There's all sorts of funnels. There's all the technology, all the instruction, everything else you need. I highly recommend that program. It's our flagship program. It's the best thing that we've got. There's 150 videos back there. You'll never run out of stuff to learn from. You'll absolutely love the program. Again, bfadigital.com. And if you'd like a free copy, digital copy of my ebook, you can uh, text THC podcast to 44222. Again, that was the recap on everything. Look, those five pieces to the puzzle are huge. The image being the biggest part. Make sure you focus on image first so that you can draw them in. Uh, lastly, don't forget, damn it, leave me a review. Five stars, baby, over on iTunes. That'll help me out a lot because my goal is to get in front of 300 million people and help them improve their lives through selling. I need you to leave me a review so that we can use iTunes and podcasting as a solid platform to help me reach that goal. And if you want to follow me on social media, I am clickso.com forward slash closer, C-L-Y-X-O.com forward slash closer. While you're there, sign up for your own free account. Thank you guys for hanging out today, and uh, be sure to share this with a friend. Later.